Welcome to this introduction on working from home. For many people, the move to working from home can be a bit daunting as it removes a number of support channels you may well have been used to. While you're working in the office, you have people around you, you have facilities, um, there are things that you can access very easily when you're in that environment. And moving away from that can feel a little bit unnerving to start with. Myself and many of the trainers at Fudge Learn have worked from home on and off over the years and we're hoping that we can share some of our experiences with you and maybe make that transition a little easier. Working from home may be a new experience for either workers or the business, so it's important that you develop a trust relationship with both your employer and your employees so that everybody is comfortable with the way that people are working when they're not physically in the office. One of the ways of developing this trust relationship is to define boundaries around your working practice while you're working from home. Over time, the way you work may change and you'll refine and change things, but set off with an initial set of agreed ways of working, and that will help everybody feel comfortable about what you're doing and how you're going to be productive. Agree your working hours and share that with your team. This stops people wondering where you are and it helps develop trust between you and them. Agree with your line manager what your deliverables are, the KPIs and the daily targets that you're going to be using. This isn't anything new, something that you do in the office, but it's very important, particularly early on, that you both have the confidence that the mode of working is productive and that you are working in an efficient way. And this is an easy way for you to keep track of that and make sure that things aren't sliding either way. It also stops you falling into the trap of putting more hours in just to prove that you're making the effort. I'm not saying that that's always a bad thing, but it is very easy to let that get out of control. And we'll look at that more a bit later in the uh, video. If you've got planned holiday or other absences, make sure your calendar is up to date. When you're in the office, the information about when you're off and when you're not um, going to be in the office flows very easily. and People pick on that very quickly. When you're working remotely, those sorts of things can slide by and you'll find people trying to book meetings into your diary when you're not going to be around. That's frustrating for all concerned. Agree as a team how you're going to use the different communication channels that you have available to you. This will enable you to prioritise your responses. So something like fancy a quick chat can be done on instant messenger and it can just sit and wait until you're ready and people learn to understand that that's what is expected. Something that is urgent because something very bad is going to happen if you don't respond quickly should be directed to you via a phone call and that will clue you in to the fact that this is an urgent matter that needs your immediate response. If there's an agreed childcare component to your working from home, again, make sure everybody understands that and that there are certain points of the day when you're not going to be available, just as if you were not in the office at all. Again, it just stops people getting frustrated and it helps develop that trust if everybody understands when you will be available. And finally, make sure you've tested all your hardware and software very early in the process and ironed out any bugs. Again, there's nothing worse than going into a, an online meeting and suddenly realizing that some of your hardware isn't compatible with the system that you're trying to use and you're unable to talk to anybody. So test early, get the bugs out before you need them for real. Not everyone has the luxury of a home office, but it's very important that you find a space that can act as a dedicated area, free from interruptions as far as possible, and not subject to other people wanting to use it. It doesn't have to be a whole room, maybe that you have to pack it up at the end of each day, but during work hours it is your office. Make sure that other people in your home understand this and agree with them rules for when they can disturb you. For example, if I have my headphones on, I'm effectively not here. Once the headphones come off, then you can talk to me. Test your setup with friends and family to make sure it works. This relates to all areas of technology. You can always test them with people away from the office just to make sure that uh, it's working within the space particularly that you've defined. And also be aware that the health and safety regulations still apply even though you're out of the office. In fact, they almost apply more. So make sure you're not uh, in danger of injuring yourself with the space that you're using as your office. You should perform a workplace assessment of the area that you're going to be working in. Your HR department can give you a hand with this and provide the details of the things that you should be checking for. 
It's very easy when you're working from home to get sucked into bad habits about what the working day is. You should make sure you're maintaining regular working hours. It's very easy to start working a little bit earlier in the morning or possibly staying a bit later in the evening. That's fine on an occasional basis, but it shouldn't become the norm. You haven't got those clues to kind of guide you about when the day starts and finishes. So, you know, you don't have a train in in the morning that gets you to the office at a particular time. You don't have to leave the office at a particular time in the evening to make sure you don't get stuck in traffic. All of those things, the other people leaving the office that kind of clue you in to the end of the day aren't there. And it's very easy to let your business life drift into your home life and your working day to extend. As I say, occasionally, that's fine. We all have deadlines that we have to get to. But if it's happening regularly, then you're not doing yourself any favours. Try and put something into the morning routine that kind of clues you in to the start of the day. So take a walk, have a cup of coffee, do the washing, whatever it is. But say to yourself, I am not going to start work until I have finished my breakfast, had my coffee, walked the dog, whatever it happens to be. You may be gaining some significant time by the fact that you're not commuting into the office. So make positive use of that. That may mean that you can start the day a little earlier, but try and make sure you get that time back at the end of the day so that you're maintaining a decent work-life balance. Make sure that you've got goals set for the day. Very easy, again, when you're not in a work environment to perhaps let things drift a little bit, get too focused on a specific task, spend too long doing one thing. So keep track of what you're up to and make sure you, at the end of the day, you review what you've done and celebrate what you've done. You know, say to yourself, good, I managed to get to the end of that. I worked my way through there. I have been productive today. It is a very good feeling to actually just talk to yourself a little bit and celebrate what you've done. Take breaks just the same as you would in the office. If you're used to having lunch sat at your desk, then there's nothing wrong with doing that at home as well. But make sure you are thinking about screen time. Make sure you're thinking about looking away from the monitor. Again, haven't got those distractions of people talking to you that make you look up, make you look round. So you may well find that you're spending longer and longer looking at the screen, sat in the chair, not getting up. So put fixed breaks in. Go and make yourself a drink. Go and get yourself some lunch at certain points during the day just to make sure that you're breaking up the, the period of time. And at the end of the day, the same thing. Pick the time you're going to finish. You know, more or less, switch off the computer and make sure you do something. Go for a walk or go to the gym or whatever it is you like to do at the end of the day. But again, switch the computer off. Don't leave it on just in case something occurs to you through the evening. You have finished work. If you wouldn't do that when you're going to the office, don't start doing it just because you're working from home. Communication with your team is very important and probably more important if you're working remotely than it is in the office. Keep informal contacts flowing. Chat, email, text, whatever it might be. Ask people about their weekends just as you would in the office. You know, if something's going on in their life, make sure you're staying in touch with that. You're keeping those informal contact channels going. Also, make sure that you are attending virtual meetings and you're focusing on them. So if you were going to attend a meeting face to face, you would give that meeting your attention just because you're remote, just because nobody can see your face. Don't treat that as time when you could be doing something else. You owe it to yourself and the business to focus on that meeting. If, if you're not focused on it, you have to ask yourself why you're in it. Don't get distracted. Don't get dragged off into other tasks. Focus on the meeting just as if you were there. And also get face to face time with your manager, a video chat, can be a little bit odd when you start using it, but sometimes just seeing somebody's face gives you a bit more visual clues about how they're feeling, how they're responding to you, and can give you some confidence that everything is going well. Specific periods of time, make sure you're getting those meetings booked in with your manager to feedback to them how it's going and get feedback from them about how your efforts are being perceived from the other side. Without direct human interaction, some people may feel isolated while working at home. This feeling of detachment can, over time, start to affect your mental state. With no external feedback from your colleagues, it may go unnoticed until the point where you've already impacted on your well-being. Don't allow this to happen. Think about your attitude to tasks and workload. Is it changing over time? Analyse your interactions with team members and your wider circle. Can you spot any differences? Be your own feedback loop. Let yourself know if things don't feel right. And be proactive in stopping this in the first place. There are a number of wellness techniques, mindfulness, deep breathing, meditation. Find something that suits you and make sure you practice it regularly. 
Most importantly, if you do feel you've spotted a change in your state of well-being, raise this with your line manager or the HR department. Getting help early, putting in place measures to counteract the problem, far better than trying to fix it when it's gone on for a long time. Just because you're not regularly in the office doesn't mean you're not entitled to training or indeed that training is impossible. Most training providers will offer virtual classroom sessions or self-paced learning. And that means that you can continue your training at your own pace from home without disrupting your schedule. One or two other bits and pieces. You're still entitled to annual leave just because you're not going into the office. You're still doing a full day's work. You should still make sure you book and take your annual leave exactly as you would normally. And in the same way, if you're sick, make sure you're not working while you're feeling unwell. If it's something minor, then that's fine. But if you're genuinely ill, then you should call in sick. Your productivity is not going to be as good if you're not at your best. You could also find that you're extending the duration of the illness by not giving your body a chance to rest. When you're at home, you'll notice that there are lots of people who knock on your door during the day. You don't notice them in the office, they just come and go. And some of them can be quite persistent. There's nothing wrong with standing up and getting a parcel from a courier. But don't get yourself dragged into conversations on the doorstep. I'm sorry I'm working. Works very well with all but the most persistent of cold callers. And if they are being very persistent, don't feel bad about simply saying, I'm sorry, and closing the door. You are at work. It's not your time. It's business time. And you need to be able to focus on that. Make sure that you're managing other people's attitude to working from home. You may be great at it. Some people are. Some people struggle with it. And you need to be sure that other people's attitudes aren't dragging your productivity down. People who will constantly want to send chat messages to you right through the day. Some of it is absolutely fine. That little bit of communication is grand. When it gets too much, you need to just dial it down. Make sure that people understand that you also have work to get on with. Some people will also complain about the fact that they're having to work remotely and they will want to get back into the office and they'll want to have face-to-face -face meetings. If that's not possible for you, feel comfortable about making them understand that, that you are not available to go into the office. You cannot attend that face-to-face -face meeting, but you will dial in and you will contribute exactly as you would, as if you were there. So it's just about managing some expectations, but also making sure that people aren't dragging your time down simply because they're not coping very well. And do what works for you. When you're new to it, try using some of the techniques we talk about in this session. But as you go through, you'll find things that work for you. Make sure you share those with your colleagues because they may find them useful as well. And you'll develop ways of your team working as you go through the process. Ultimately, I enjoy working from home. I like the lack of distraction. I like it that colleagues find solutions for themselves because there's a lag in me answering simple questions. Remember that hierarchy of communication. I love the fact that I'm not 90 minutes sat in a traffic jam every evening. Find what you like about working from home and celebrate it. Identify what you don't like about it and work with your manager and your team to fix it. If your business has been supporting remote workers for some time, they may well have online tools that are available to enable you to communicate, to share resources and to connect to systems. If you're new to this, or if you're an old hand, but you're just looking for something new to solve a particular problem, this is a list of software that can help you with some of the challenges of working remotely. If you're very new to this way of working, or even if you're an old hand looking for something to solve a particular problem, you might find the following list of tools helpful. They all have their own particular features and solve specific problems. Some are free, some come with other software, and some you'll need to buy. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. Thank you for your time. Wherever you are in your remote working journey, I hope you found something useful within the content. As a final message, I encourage you to embrace working from home as an opportunity to improve your work-life balance, become more productive and develop new skills. Should you wish to download this presentation, it's available on our website at blogs.fudgelearn.com. Dot com.